Stuck in my, stuck in my, stuck in my way Only pay attention to the things that I say Off the molly get me feeling like a great A Yeah, great A Perk set up in the morning, it's gonna be a great day Howdy folks, back again with another Spigot video This episode we're gonna continue our Quartermaster plugin To make it even more advanced than what we have so far And yeah, so I've been getting a lot of requests on this video So I guess you're enjoying the little couple part series for this plugin. So what I want to do so far is let's go back to Quartermaster YouTube here. And the first thing I want to do is basically make it so that whenever you type slash lock, it's able to determine if it's locked already because we don't want the player to be able to lock a chest multiple times or for another player to override one player's lock, maybe something like that. So we just need to add a system for checking to see if there's a lock or not. So we already have the capabilities of doing that because in Locky Tills we do have the get who locked method here and then we also have the is currently locked method so we can use these uh, together to determine whether we should allow the player to lock this chest or not. So after we determine whether it's a chest or not, let's cut this by the way, after we determine that we also need to check and see if it's uh, locked in the first place because we know it's a chest so we want to see if that chest is locked, right? So we're going to do Locky Tills dot is currently locked and then now we just got to provide the target which is the block that we're checking so if that chest is already locked what we want to do is check and see who is trying to lock it so we can say first let's check and see who locked it right so we'll do lock utils uh lock utils dot uh let's see is currently or get who locked and then target so we get an instance of who locked it and let's see if that's equal to the person who's trying to lock the chest right now so the p the player for the sender um, so if it's equal to that same person, that means we can just say p send message a chat color blue. You already own this chest. It's it's locked. All right. So they just know that they already locked it and everything's secure. And otherwise, if they um, if it's another person who's trying to lock the chest and it's not the same person, but it's already locked, um, then we want to say something like p doesn't message um, that chest we'll put this in like dark red as an error that chest is already locked by and then now we can just provide the player's name so lock utils lock utils dot uh, get you locked target dot get name okay that should do it for us so that's pretty good. That's if it's going to be already locked. But if it's not locked, so else, then we want what we want to do is do this right here. So it's going to say, "Would you like to lock this chest?" And then open up the lock menu and all that, since we know that it's not locked already. Okay. So yeah, um, that was really simple. So let's test this out just to make sure it works. So I'm going to compile this now, and uh, I'll see you on the server. Okay, guys. So I'm loading onto the server right now, so we can test the plugin out. Um, the first thing we want to do is check and see if the lock me mechanism still works. And then we're going to lock it again just to make sure that it can check and see whether it's already locked or not when we try double locking a chest, basically. So yeah, we're going to put this one down right here. And we're going to do uh, slash lock. And it's going to say lock detected, lock chest, question mark. And we click yes. And now it says creating new lock, blah, blah, blah. And we can open this and stuff, but let's also check and see what happens when we lock it again. So we'll do slash lock. And now it says you already own this chest. It's locked because, of course, I do own this chest. So now let's get my alt account on to see if he's able to lock the chest. Because we don't want a player to have multiple blocks on the chest, so especially not two different players locking the same chest. That would be terrible. So we're going to do slash TP Illuminati. And let's try locking his chest real quick. So we cannot open it. It says this chest is already locked by Illuminati. So let's try locking it. Slash lock. And now it says, if we open this up a little bit, it says this chest, is, that chest is already locked by Illuminati. Okay, pretty simple. So we know that works. But let's also change, uh, change this thing here. So chat color gray. Okay, so it fits in a little better. But anyway, we know that works now. So that's pretty cool. A little bit of a security thing for us. And let's also go into, okay, let's add this here. So we're going to go into open chest listener. And let's rename the entire class. We're going to change it to... Uh, refactor there we go refactor rename and we're going to change this name to uh, chest listeners because we're going to put everything related to chest within here okay so refactor that's going to rename it all that and what we want to do here is add a new um, what's it called event here so our listener whatever you want to call it so event handler public void uh, let's see break chest listener break chest listener 
So our goal for this little thing here is going to be for if a player breaks a chest, we want to check and see if that chest is locked or not. And if it is locked, what we want to do is check and see if the person who's trying to break the chest is equal to the person who owns the chest. And if that is equal, then that means that we want to allow them to break the chest, and then eventually we want to delete the lock from the database since the, the chest doesn't exist anymore, right? And then if it's not the same person, if the person who's trying to break the chest is not equal to the person who owns the chest, that means that we want to not allow them to break the chest, okay? Because it's not their chest. They locked it. They didn't lock it, so they should not be able to break it, basically, okay? Very simple. So let's try that out, okay? So let's also, we need to put the event inside of here. So we'll call this break block event, or block break event, rather. There we go. So whenever a block is broken, we want to check and see if that block is equal to a chest. So e.get block dot get type dot get equals, and we're going to do material dot chest okay and what get block does is obviously get the block if you do control q we can see what object it returns it gets a block here if we do control q for get type that's going to return a material and that's why we're doing equals material not equals that like a chest block or something like that so yeah that's the easiest way to determine whether two blocks are equal to each other by getting the material okay so now that we know it's a chest we want to check and see if that chest is locked or not so if lock utils dot uh is currently locked and we just got to provide that block so e dot get block so if it is locked, we want to check and see if that's the person who's trying to break it. Um, if uh, e dot get player, the person who's doing the event, is equal to uh, lock utils, or we can just do equals. That's better for uh, objects. So lock utils dot get who locked, and then provide the block again. So if that's that, if that's the same person, then what we want to do is do uh, nothing. We want to allow them to break it, right? But else if if it's not the same person, let's uh, copy and paste this here. If it's not the same person, oops. Then what we want to do is do e dot set cancel. So it's going to cancel the event from even happening, aka since this is a block break event, canceling the chest from breaking. Okay, so that's simple enough. All we're doing is checking to see if a block breaks. If it is the block that's breaking. Then we want to check and see if that block is a material of chest, and then we want to check and see if that block is locked. And if it's locked, then the person who owns it can only break it, not the person who does not own it. And if it's the same person, then it allows them to break it. If it's not the same person, then we're going to cancel the event from even happening, and therefore the the block is not going to be broken. Okay, so let's try compiling this and see what happens. Okay, so I'm in the server now, so let's reload here, and let's see if this works. All right, cool. So we have a chest here that we know it's locked. So if we try breaking it, let's see what happens. Okay, it works. Nothing uh, went so wrong here. But let's try making another chest and locking it and see if this player can uh, break it because he does not own the chest, right? So we're going to do slash lock to lock this. There we go. So now we're locking that. So let's go into this account and let's try breaking it right now. And it doesn't break, right? And let's give the player a message when they try to breaking it saying they can't break it or something like that. So right here we'll say p does send message or e dot get player dot send message and we'll say check color uh, dark red you do not own this chest it can't be broken okay so I've been thinking about what I want to add to this plugin and one thing I thought about is maybe a, a list system so if the player does slash list or slash locks list or something like that they can pull up a list of all of their different locks, right? So they can see the location of all their locks maybe, they can see um, a bunch of information, right? So that'd be kind of cool so they can see how many they have, stuff like that. So let's make a command that does that basically. And then when they click on one of those locks in the menu that shows all their locks, they can manage the lock, like delete it, add players to be able to access it, stuff like that. So this is just the beginning to making a more advanced plugin here. So um, I think later on in this plugin's development, we're gonna have a command manager or something like that so we can all make it go under quartermaster like slash quartermaster lock slash quartermaster list but for now we'll just have slash lock and slash list separately so yeah we're gonna make a lock command that's what we'll call it for now uh it says cannot create file file already exists oh yeah i meant list command that's fine so list command there we go so now it's going to be in there so now we can implement this command what the hell uh don't ask me again so implements command executor and we want to public void on command, obviously. This is essential, basically. And now let's get an instance of player. So first, let's check and see if sender is instance of player before we do that. And then now we could do player, player, 
is equal to player sender. So this is going to be a command where they type slash list for now until we add it you know, to be more advanced. And whenever they do that, it's going to open up a GUI showing all of their locks, okay? So we need to add a new GUI for that. We need to go into the GUI manager here and create a new GUI. So we're going to go up here real quick and do private static inventory. And we're going to call this one locks list GUI because that's exactly what it's going to be for. And then now we can make a new method for that. So public static open locks list GUI. All right. And so inside of there, oh, public static void, there we go. And so inside of here as a parameter, what we want to provide is the player that we want to open the chest for, or the, uh, what's it called, the, the uh, list for. So down here, we want to do locks list GUI is equal to bucket dot create inventory. And we're going to give this a name, or our owner of the players uh, provided. And then how many, you know, slots do we want to do for this? So let's just do the max for now, 56 slots. So so that we know it can fit as many locks as possible. But in the future, let's make it a system so that whenever um, it does this, it's able to determine how many slots it needs because of course some players might not have a lot of locks, like 56 locks, that's a lot. So we want to change the size of their inventory depending on how many locks they have. So we'll add that later on, it's a little more advanced kind of. So we'll just wait for that. So now we'll add the title for the chests here, or the inventory, sorry. And we're gonna do dark red, and we're gonna say your locks. All right, and that's it for that. And so now here, inside of here, we can uh, then get all of the locks for the player and display them. Okay, so this is gonna be the, the kind of tricky part, but it's kind of not tricky, it's very cool. Um, so we need to access the database and get all of the locks from the database, all the documents for the player, right? We can't just get every lock from the database because there's different locks for certain players. So we want to create a filter for the player's UUID and get every lock that is under that UUID, basically, okay? So let's do string UUID and we'll say, uh, p dot get unique id dot to string. Okay, so we're getting the UUID from this player that we just provided, and now let's turn that UUID into a filter, basically, or add it to this filter here that we're creating. So document filter, import that from BSON is equal to new document, and then we're doing UUID because we know UUID is a uh, a key within our documents in our database, as as we've seen, and then now we can do UUID as a parameter here. And so now we can do quartermaster YouTube dot get database collection dot find filter. So what it's going to do is find every document that matches that filter that we just created with that UUID, and it's going to return each of those. So then we can just loop through each of those documents by doing for each uh, consumer. This thing still bothers me. It's a kind of weird the way we have to do this, but consumer documents or document. We still have to import consumer. It's a little weird how it works consumer there we go import that from function and we'll just surround this with parentheses here and we'll say document like that document and then close this and we'll say document document and then finally we open this up here like this and now inside of here we can then cycle through each of the documents because it's a for loop and so with each document we want to create a basically a item in the inventory representing that document, right? So let's do that. So we're going to use the documents or the locks found to display them in the inventory, right? So we're going to do that. So we're going to make an item stack of lock is equal to new item stack. And this is going to be a material of chests because the only thing that we're storing within our database or allowing to be locked is a chest currently. We're going to add more blocks later on, so make that one, by the way. And so now we can add some metadata for that. So we're going to do item meta lock underscore meta is equal to lock dot get item meta. So now we can do lock meta dot set display name, and we could do chat color green, green, and we'll say chest lock. Okay, because again, that's the only thing we can provide. And later on, we're going to allow the player to name their locks so that we, they know um, the different locks they have because they want to, because some players might have different, um, they might label their chest differently. Like let's say the player has a chest that only holds diamonds, then they want to name that lock diamond chest so they know they can sort their, their locks basically. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, um, we'll add that later on. And so now if we want to add a array list here, array list of strings for the lore of the block or the item is equal to new array list, okay? 
And now we want to add some information. So we're going to do lower.add. And let's add like a little border here for neatness. So check color.gold. And we'll do this here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. And so now we can do lower.add, check color yellow. And let's think about what we want to provide as information inside of this list here. And I think the first thing that we should provide is the location. So that the player just has an idea of where the lock is located. I think later on what we want to do is add a configuration option, the config.yml, allowing server, server owners to turn the location description off so that um, players can't just go back to the chest whenever they want to in case they lose where it is. Because it's kind of a cheat to know where everything is, you know, the XYZ coordinates. So they can turn that off if they want to in the future. So anyway, um, so now that we have the location here, so now we need to display the location now that we have the label here. Um, so we need, to act the, we need to somehow access the XYZ values from our document. And if you remember correctly, how did we add the, the location to our document in the first place? We added a sub document, right? So then we could access the, the sub document by creating a new document here and do location. And now we could do document dot get location just like that. And since we know location corresponds to a document within our actual document, then we could just cast this to document because uh, that's a sub document, right? So hopefully that makes sense. But if we go back to uh, lock utils. You remember if we go back up here to the create new lock method, we can see that we're creating a sub location, a new document here, or a sub document uh, within location called location. So now we're just creating that um, object. We're reverse engineering it basically, right? So we're going to here and we're creating the location, or here, and we're creating the location from that document originally, okay? Anyway, so now that we have that, we can access it by doing lower.add, and we could say check color aqua just to color it. Check color aqua. Um, X and now we get a check color green. What the fuck? Why does it do that? It's so annoying. Whenever I press tab, it goes backwards like that. Anyway, so now we could do location since we have that object right above, and we could do dot get integer because we know X Y Z is an integer, so X just like that. Okay, so now it's going to return X hopefully and store it inside the lore. There you go. And let's copy this so we can. You know, just do the Z values, or the Y and the Z value real quick. So we'll change this to Y, and we'll change this to Z, change this to Y, and then change this to Z, okay? So it should add that for us. And then on the bottom here, let's add some more stuff. Lore.add, and uh, let's think about, so... Yeah, so what else do we store in the database? We also store the, the date of the object when the lock was created. So we just add that too. We could do date created, colon, space, document dot get date and then we can do the get date method because uh, again documents can store date objects so it's really useful in that way so then we could just uh, provide the key of the value so creation dash date which we you know have in the database and then we want to do two string because the lower object here the lower array list is only able to store strings so we just want to turn that document or that date object into a string by doing two string here okay Anyway, so now that we have that, that's pretty much all the information I want to store. So let's do lore.add. And let's add, let's actually just copy this from up here. Add the bottom border just like that. Okay. So it should add all of that for us. Hopefully that's not too complicated. And so we want to do lock meta dot set lore and just provide the lore right here, just like that. And then finally, or almost finally, we want to do lock dot set item meta and lock meta, lock underscore meta. And finally, finally, we want to locks list GUI dot add item lock. Okay. So the way this is going to work is depending on how many locks the player has, it's going to loop through each of this. It's going to loop through this every time, basically, for however many locks they have, right? So each lock is going to have an item made for it temporarily, and then add the item to the uh, inventory. It's going to repeat the cycle until it reaches the end of that. So hopefully that's pretty simple for you. Um, it's not too advanced. But now what we want to do is go back to list command. And now what we can do is do GUI manager dot open locks list GUI and just provide player as a parameter. We'll change this to P actually because just laziness. So yeah, now we got P. So we can test that out now pretty much, I think. Actually, no, we need to register the command, of course. So let's go back to um, Codemaster YouTube and we'll do that right here. So git command list dot set executor new list command and again we're probably going to change that later on but at least we have the code right now right so let's go into plugin.yml and also add it here so list description uh, view your locks okay very simple 
Um, so now we can compile this and see how it looks within the game. All right, so I got everything reloaded here. So let's test it out now by doing slash list. And boom, oh, an error occurred while attempting to perform this command. So we know we did something wrong. So let's check the console here and look for the error. Wait, it doesn't show, that's very strange. Wait, that's why, okay. Sometimes the um, the console doesn't like keep showing text. So if you just press a key, it's gonna like force it to buffer basically. Anyway, um, let's look and try and read this error here. It says unhandled exception executing command list. So if we scroll down here, it says, um, let's see, tick task run. This is strange. Validity is true. Size for custom inventory must be a multiple of nine. Oh, okay, I see the problem. That's a very dumb problem, but uh, if we go back to list, or no, GUI manager, I set it to 56 for the number of slots, but of course, nine times six is not 56, it's 54. My mistake, I can't do math, obviously, so let's rerun this here, and I'll see you in the server. Oh, okay, so one more thing we also forgot to do is add a p.open inventory and just provide the locks list GUI, just like that. Because of course we're adding everything to the inventory, so we need to also open the inventory when we're done so the player can see what we just added. Okay, so I'm back, reloading now, and let's try it. Okay, slash list, and boom, now we get everything. So it says your locks, and now we get all the locks here. Perfect, and look at all that glorious information we just retrieved from the database. So let's look at the first one. It says chest lock, we got the divider at the top, it says the location, XYZ, and then we have the date created at the bottom. And we get all of that uniquely for every single lock that we have. That's that's freaking beautiful, right? Pretty cool. So that's awesome. And then in the future, what we want to do is allow the player to click on one of these chests, and it's going to allow the uh, it's going to open up the manager view for that chest, so they can manage the chest, the lock, and add players to that lock. They can delete the lock if they need to, anything like that. So pretty cool. Um, we see that we have your locks as the title. Pretty simple. But let's add the um, let's make it so that the rest of the empty slots are filled with uh, gray glass, like we did with the locks menu. So if we open up this right here, slash lock, we can see that the empty ones are filled with glass, and it makes it look more uh, filled in, just better. Okay, so let's add that here. We can just go back to the code for that, copy it from here, and move it right here. There we go. So we also need to change the just copy this, paste it right here, and then paste that right here. And so now we have that. And also if you go back to GUI manager, we also need to change this to, instead of nine slots, we want to do 54. So the cycles through all of those. And let's also move it outside of here. So basically the way this working is, um, we have this inside the loop here, which is not good. So we need to move it out of the loop so that it doesn't do that every single time. It only needs to do that when it's done. So once it's done adding all the items with the loop here, then we can open up the inventory. Then we can also add the other slots to be filled, okay? So now let's see how that looks within the game slash list to see how it works and boom now we get everything it looks perfect now we get all of the chests here with all their different values really nice looking and if we click on them we cannot move them around so that's even better more professional and then all of the other slots are filled in automatically so it looks really good and yeah it's pretty awesome we did a lot this episode but that's all i want to do for this episode we added a list menu we also added the mechanism for breaking uh, chest blocks so it's like a safety mechanism so players locks can't be or chests can't be deleted um, and then we also added the lock thing, so it also checks to see before you lock a chest whether the chest is already locked, so that's also important. Yeah, we didn't add too much, but we added a good amount because this episode is getting pretty long, so I'm going to end it here. In the next episode, hopefully, we're going to continue working on the menu, so we want to add the manager system, so whenever a player clicks on the lock, whenever a player clicks on one of these locks here, it's going to open up the manager view for that lock, okay? So we're going to add that, that's going to be the primary goal of the next episode, and then beyond that, we're just going to continue adding features like uh, the config file, permissions, stuff like that. But overall, this plugin is looking really good so far. I'm, I have high hopes for it. Um, so if you have any suggestions on what you want to see for this plugin, like if there's any ideas you have for what I should add, then just let me know in the comment section. Or you can join our Discord server and leave it in the suggestion channel. And yeah, so I'd appreciate, I would appreciate that if you did that. And yeah, just join our Discord server anyway. There's a link there in the description so you could join it, get some new friends because you probably don't have any. And if you need help, you could ask for help there too on your coding and stuff like that. We have plenty of people who want to help you out. We have about 500 members so far. So yeah, just join it. Anyway, we also have the code for today's episode in the description below. So make sure you click the link and then see all the code and bookmark it for future reference in case you want to see how we did this, if you forget. Also, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video. And you can join this channel as a member for $1, $5, or $10 a month. And you can cancel at any time, no problem. But either way, I'm very thankful for all your support. 
and uh, I will continue making videos for you guys so you can better your programming knowledge because that's the thing you have to do always. And yeah, so if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.